So I want to talk about the hero trap. I had an interesting discussion with one of my uh, followers this morning, and he was in the classic trap of wanting to act like a hero as the new leader on a project. He had been promoted. He wanted to do well in his job. And of course, he comes into a new project. Everything's behind. The project is failing. And it's not going to work out. Like he, he's looking at the situation. He realizes he might be able to save the project, but it's going to create a lot of problems for him. It's going to burn him out. And that creates a future that doesn't make him happy because he joined a team expecting it to be functional and it's not. And so what happens when he saves the team? If you look at the graph here, you'll find that I've kind of outlawed, outlined this uh, project. The project's failing. He has the ability to do hero effort to in, in engineering. At this point, he has the opportunity to actually save the, the project at a personal cost with unsustainable hours or effort. The problem is if he does that, the business doesn't understand the true cost. So the leadership doesn't learn what's going on and they don't have a sustainable team. So they're not going to learn anything. And at this point, the hero engineer is going to be harmed and their own capacity is going to be lowered because for the next three weeks, they're going to feel more burned out. And of course, if this loop keeps happening, eventually that engineer is going to burn out hard. Uh, of course, the fun thing about this is that because the engineering didn't, the leadership didn't learn, the company isn't sustainable. At that point, there's no sustainability in the company. The company lacks a sustainable team. And of course, its projects are going to continue to fail. It doesn't matter what happens at this point. The company is in a downward spiral. But let's just say we add a leadership effort. Okay, The project's failing. What does a leader do? Well, leader mitigates future failure by documenting why it's failing, bubbling up those reasons up the leadership. Leadership makes those investments needed to turn the product around as a sustainable clip. And now the company also has less future risk. Is the company sustainable? Well, maybe they still lack a sustainable team. So maybe they don't. Maybe you're in that documentation process. Maybe you ultimately need that project to fail and burn the company hard enough that they learn their lesson and they realize that their capacity needs to be higher. Otherwise, the company's not going to learn that they are below sustainable levels of investment. And at that point, once they do learn that and they turn things around, they will have engineering capacity that is considered sustainable by the business. The key here thing here is that unless the business side feels the pain and the pressure of a failed project, they're not going to know. If you're working as an engineer and you're trying to be the hero, what you're doing is you're taking the entire company, lifting it on your back, and being the only person that is keeping the, the projects going. You are going to be the person who leads the team, yes. You're going to be the person that saves the day, yes. And you're also going to be the person that burns out and isn't going to be sustainable in the future. And at some point, you're going to get trapped by that. You're going to have a project fail that shouldn't have failed because you did not take care of yourself or the team at a sustainable level. <sighs> One of the most difficult aspects of being a engineering leader is acknowledging that you have to protect your team from the business making bad decisions. It is your job as an engineering leader to be an umbrella and to document the problems in the business so that when you go to the leadership, they can be aware of the issues and fix them. Now, if you have an organization that is led by sales and marketing, and they're not investing in the engineering team, well, the fix is actually pretty simple. Stop being a hero. Stop fixing the project by working nights and weekends and working at unsustainable levels. 
do your 45 hours of work every week and then go home and focus on your life. And if you have to work more than that, if you're doing crunch time, if you're doing overtime, then the company has intentionally made the choice to burn you out. They are explicitly telling you that they don't care about your health or you. Act accordingly. Because here's the deal. If you save the project, let's say that you've got a failing project here, right? And you can do the hero effort to save it. From the business perspective, they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to invest in your team. They didn't have to make anything better. They didn't have to do anything to make the company more sustainable or give it business continuity because they are depending on extra capacity that they're not paying for, that they're getting from you. That is a disservice to your entire team because what that means is when you finally burn out, someone else is going to have to shorter that load. Someone else is going to get burned out by, by this after you do, and you have to leave or take a sick day or whatever. This is unsustainable, and no business wants to be unsustainable. The problem here is poorly communicated requirements to the business, where the business feels like they can get away with some extra slack or lack of slack in this case, because they have the engineering capacity they think they really need, and they just don't trust engineering and think that engineering is being whining about their, their needs. What you need to do as an engineer is you need to document what's wrong and prove your case so that when the project fails and you allow it to fail because you'd refuse to be a hero, you can point to the documentation and go, look, I was here all day, every day for that entire project I explained what was wrong, I documented it, I sent you that email, et cetera, et cetera. You didn't listen to me. Now we're at this situation. Guess what? At that point, leadership failed. You as an engineer did your job. If you spend that entire work day working, then you did your job. And if the engineering leadership is doing its job, it's going to be documenting the gaps in terms of actual engineering capacity versus the expectations from the business. Now, the important thing here is that you shouldn't slack off. As an engineer, it's your job to get the work done. But if you're working as hard as you can and you're putting in a full week of work and your team just can't get to everything because there's too much to do, that means the company isn't planning accordingly. It means that somebody in the planning organization, such as a project manager, or a PM of some kind, or maybe somebody above them is not doing their job well. It is not your job to do their job better for them or mitigate the risk their bad choices cause. You should not try to be a hero. The hero burns out. And tragically, if you look at all the stories, the hero always dies in the end. Okay, They go up against that monster that they just can't beat no matter what. And then their party wipes, and at that point, somebody finds a new hero, and the cycle repeats itself over and over again. The people that are really valued by the business are the people that document the problems and mitigate future risk. The people that are taking accountability for the company and actually wanting it to be successful by mitigating risk and putting processes in place and making sure that there's enough engineering capacity to get all the work done. Is it a cost? Absolutely. But a company would rather pay that cost than not exist. Sure, companies hate paying. That's just how it is. But you're going to have to accept that is your job as part of an engineering leadership position to not just get the work done. Your job is to ensure continuity, not just of the team and of the company, but of your own engineering capacity. Which means if you burn yourself out being a hero, you failed.